We are still in the busiest celebration period for the island as we honor the triumphs of freedom and the opportunity to create our desired destiny. Yesterday, we commemorated the breaking of the slave chains and remembered the brave legacy of our ancestors. I hope you took the time to really reflect on the impact of the freedom we enjoy today. We will continue to honor Jamaica's legacy on this Wednesday edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry, and I am so glad you could join us today. Let's dive right into the show as we take you through the pages of our rich history and identity. Stay with us. Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, and the strength and vigor of my body. In the service of my fellow citizens, I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace. To work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly. and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, August 2, 2023. The reggae girls made history today when they became the first Caribbean team to advance to the round of 16 in any FIFA World Cup tournament. The girls secured their spot in the knockout round after a draw with Brazil. Prime Minister Andrew Holness and Sport Minister Olivia Grange both congratulated the team on their exceptional performance since the start of the tournament. Goalkeeper Rebecca Spencer was also commended for being named player of the match with her stunning performance in saving eight goals from the net. Jamaica is now on five points, having placed second in Group F, behind France on seven points. The reggae girls will play the winner of Group H in the round of 16, which is scheduled for August 8. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is calling on Jamaicans to embrace a positive and uplifting mindset as they work to improve their lives and impact future generations. In his Emancipation Day message, Mr. Holness said Jamaicans had a duty to use their freedom to improve their lives. Today. In the information age, we are being bombarded by all kinds of information which, without context and discernment, can imprison us in negativity and impact our mind, prospects and mental health. Meanwhile, Leader of the Opposition Mark Golding used his Emancipation Day message to advocate for unity. This Emancipation Day, let us carry the spirit of hope and unity in our hearts throughout the coming year. Let us use it as a catalyst for positive change and collective progress. Together, we can build a Jamaica that embodies the ideals of justice, freedom, and equality of access to opportunity for all. The Honorable Audrey Sewell is the new Cabinet Secretary. Her appointment took effect on August 1. Subsequently, her previous role as Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation has been assigned to Arlene Williams. Another change is the appointment of Ambassador Rocky Mead as Permanent Secretary for the Office of the Prime Minister. These posts also became effective on August 1. All three appointments were on the recommendation of Prime Minister Andrew Holness and were approved by the Governor-General. In a release, Mr. Holness said the government had every confidence in their exceptional expertise and unwavering dedication to serving the people of Jamaica. This, he indicated, would undoubtedly contribute significantly to the progress and development of the nation. The individuals are tasked with improving service delivery and efficiency in government to build on significant gains being made. The donation of a 1,000-gallon water tank has increased the storage capacity at the Duckenfield Primary School in St. Thomas. The kind gesture was made by Quartz Ready Cash through its Corporate Social Responsibility Program. 
The tank will improve water supply at the school for the new academic year. Acting Senior Education Officer for Region 2, Liebert Drysdale, says it will prevent disruption of school operations due to lack of water. These water tanks will enhance the storage capacity of our schools and more importantly, reduce the number of days schools are closed because of the unavailability of water. Brand manager for Courts Ready Cash, Suzanne Campbell, says the company is targeting a limited number of primary and secondary schools to increase water harvesting and storage capacity. Courts Ready Cash has commenced the donation of 10 water tanks and we're looking at a million dollars worth of water tank. And finally, Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett is urging delinquent tourism employers to match the 5% contribution by workers in the Tourism Workers Pension Scheme. Minister Bartlett made the call at the first annual general meeting of the scheme held recently at the Montego Bay Convention Center. He says the performance of the pension scheme as of July 21 this year shows contributions totaling $876 million from 6,214 contributors. The minister has expressed concerns about some employers not matching the 5% contribution. He is also suggesting that employees contribute up to 10% of their earnings to ensure a higher pension yield. Meanwhile, Minister Bartlett emphasizes the value of the scheme as a tool to spur economic development and provide tax-free investment opportunities for the tourism industry. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. If we ignore road signs, the consequences can be deadly. The new Road Traffic Act is about saving lives and driving us all to arrive alive. Help to maintain law and order on our nation's thoroughfares. Be a good road user. Obey the road signs. Help us save lives on our roads. We start today's show by turning the pages back a little to yesterday's Emancipation Day celebration. Watch now as we learn about one institution's integral role in the removal of the shackles of slavery. It was our own national hero, the right excellent Sam Sharp, an enslaved man and a freedom fighter who said, I would rather die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery. That sentiment was also shared by many other slaves. But the fight for freedom and the hope for victory brought liberation to many. Right here in Jamaica, the movement to end slavery was very active, and landmarks across the island document this part of our history. We are on the Emancipation Trail and we're looking at the symbolic parts of Jamaica which relate to emancipation, a very important change of status in our country. We're here in the Filippo Baptist Church compound in Spanish Town. Spanish Town is a very old city, founded in 1539, I believe, and this particular site was where the Baptists created a congregation in 1818. And this church, built by the Baptists at the time of Reverend Filippo, 
was part of the congregation that was very supportive of the move to emancipate all enslavement. And that is a magnificent building going back probably close to 200 years. This church is very historic. Right here, in, under this tamarind tree, and identified by this plaque, is the slave chains which were buried on August the 1st, 1838. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Deacon Ivan O'Connor, a member of this congregation, who is going to tell us some more about this very historic site and its relationship to emancipation. I understand that um, part of the Declaration of um, Emancipation was read from the steps of this church. And a deep hole was dug right here. And all the chains that were available were put in there and covered. And a tamarind tree was put there as a monument. I understand that the first tamarind tree was destroyed by the 51 hurricane, but it was replaced. And it stands here now as a monument where people can come and get tamarind and remember. The, 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 the slavery chains. And touch the monument right. as part of our experience right. it is here of as what a emancipation was all about. Right. right. But I also think we have to remind ourselves that the original official declaration was read from the steps of King's House, That's the facade right. which is still in front of the square. That square is Emancipation Square, which is also in Spanish Town and just a few meters away from the Philippa Baptist Church. Here was once the town center. Other important buildings in the square include the Old House of Assembly, Rodney's Memorial, and the Old Courthouse. The area was severely damaged by fire, as well as the 1692 earthquake. But parts of the buildings have since been restored and put to use. Back over at the Philippa Baptist Church. We want to reaffirm how important the Baptist movement and denomination was to emancipation. They were major players in persuading the English government to declare free at last, free at last, emancipation on the 1st of August, 1838. And it is believed that the chains of slaves were buried at the Philippa Baptist Church due to its close proximity to Emancipation Square and the unrelenting movement by the Baptist Church to put an end to slavery. Somebody said some time ago, how can we write the history of Jamaica without including the Baptists. The Baptists were one of the churches that were very integral to the teaching of the slaves and emancipation. James Philippo was one of the persons who was integral in getting emancipation for the slaves in Jamaica. While emancipation was declared for slaves, their conditions were not improved. So the movement for a more just society was challenged by Paul Bogle and George William Gordon. They were also part of the Baptist movement and later became two of our national heroes. As a result of this involvement, Baptist work in Jamaica became an enduring symbol of the church's opposition to slavery and all other forms of injustice. This building was put up uh, sometime about 1827 thereabout and has been maintained over time. It's a natural heritage site and so the National Heritage Trust has control over what happens here. Uh, right after emancipation, James Philippo established three villages, like in Slagoville, in parts of Clarendon, and also in um, established churches. So this church is steeped in our history in Jamaica. all play a pivotal role in proactively filling up the blood bank by donating blood, by encouraging those who can donate to do so regularly, and by offering support, whatever that looks like. So be it to retweet it, be it to ask a family member, tell a friend, to tell a friend, a co-worker, a colleague, even a stranger. One liter of blood can save three lives. You can give half of that at any of the Ministry of Health and Wellness's blood collection sites. There is no time to wait in a time of crisis where blood is needed. Every passing moment, the life of someone who needs blood hangs in the balance. I stand here before you as a testimony of the life-saving effects 
of donating blood. Someone gave, that's why I am alive today. If you are 17 to 60 years old and in good health, please give so others can live. Whenever you hear the following tone, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, will be giving information on an emergency situation affecting the island. Please be on the alert and listen to your radio and television for further information. This was a test of the emergency alert system, brought to you by ODPEM. Have you ever questioned your skin color as a black person? Well, in this next feature, we hear the story of our women and girls who are embracing their black identity and debunking the myths. Watch this. The culture has a, a, a body of stories and, and, and successive generations of storytellers who represent the memory of, of those people. And so, understanding who we are completely entails releasing any doubts we may have about ourselves. What I would like to know is why are there less light-skinned persons and more black-skinned persons in Jamaica? To understand more of where I'm from and being more conscious. I don't think you can ever be too conscious. Why black people don't, some black people don't really like their color. My blackness is more than just what happened in slavery times. It's more than that. We have, we are, we are bringing something in that I believe that we need to tell that story. Dear black girl, here's an extraordinary tale of your history and it begins here. Most black persons would have come to this region through the process of enslavement. And um, so that has shaped a lot of our experiences, our cultural experiences, our physical experiences as well. So we can't deny that. But I think that what really should be noted for Jamaican and Caribbean women is that we've had an experience too of resisting. So resisting enslavement, resisting encroachment on our bodies, these types of things are part of your experience as well. is so often miseducated that we believe we are not contributing unless we have on high heel shoes and stocking and jacket and tie and all of these wonderful things that 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 some some outside force tells us that we that we ought to be i think that in jamaica we can take a lot of things for granted and one of that is our blackness right and so because we take it for granted, we will bleach our skin and we try to look like, you know, the, our European brothers and sisters, but in all aspects, we are supposed to celebrate our blackness. There is a general lack of education that we as black people have about the greatness of our skin, of our skin color. Melanin is so important that it protects us from the sun's harmful UV rays and for the most part, keeps us safe from skin cancer. My blackness is unique. My blackness is strong. My blackness is culture. My blackness is special, unique, and strong. My blackness is phenomenal. My blackness is what makes me beautiful. My blackness has allowed for certain opportunities as well because say in a space they want to show diversity, I would be able to represent there as well. So when we step out and we go to different countries or we are leaving the island, 
we know within ourselves that we are you know bringing something that we are a brand right and so when we go amongst other people we're not we're not going to feel inferior we're not going to feel as though we don't contribute to something we will be able to say hey you know i bring something because i know what my blackness is traditionally jamaican women have also charted their own course in business, in politics, in um, working the public sphere. I think generally we have not been very much conforming to what is expected of womanhood for the most part. What is happening now? We are picking up some habits that I don't like. We are taking the foreign stuff. You cannot take somebody else's culture and put it on your kids. A person who doesn't know their culture is lost. God made us so beautiful. God made us so beautiful. And we should embrace what God gave to us. Don't try and change it. This is who I am. It's not a struggle. It's not a challenge. It just is. So to self, don't try to change me. Don't try to lock me up. For my ancestors have said it, and I believe in it. Black girls are exquisitely beautiful in every shade. I really hope that those who are listening to my voice will take an introspection of themselves and check out how they have been operating the motorcycle. Are you operating with an helmet, an elbow pad, a knee pad, a jacket, a shoulder pad? Are you wearing shoes instead of slippers? Have you removed the mirrors from the motorcycles? Obedience better than sacrifice to the right thing. Are you going to ensure that you buckle up in the motor vehicle and the persons in the motor vehicle behind your back, your passengers, are they buckle up? Are you going to ensure that? Are you going to give yourself adequate time to reach your destination so that you don't have to be in any ears, so that you don't help to clog up the health sector? Nobody should be going to the hospitals because of traffic crashes. Nobody. They are preventable, they are avoidable. We can make better choice than that. Jamaicans are known for their friendliness, strength, and courage. This indomitable spirit connects us and fosters nation building. In this next feature, we hear from Jamaicans who have contributed significantly to our development. While we do what we do selflessly, honoring our own commitment to excellence, we are unknowingly being seen by many we can only imagine. These words best describe the role of a hero, committed to unwavering integrity and passion, fueled by purpose. Price, a member of the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander for outstanding performance in the field of athletics at the international level. Well, it, uh, it definitely means a lot to be honored in your country for your service and your hard work. And I think for me, being able to represent my country is always an honor. And for me, going forward, I think it has just continued to raise the bar, continue to 
work hard, continue to be committed and again, you know, the, the legacy is about impact, you know, making sure that other young girls know that they too have a path and they know the path and they too can achieve success from a path or a similar path like Shelley for exceptional achievements in sports, or track and field athletics at the national, world championship and Olympic levels. I'm just grateful to be standing here receiving this award today. I'm just grateful. I would have never imagined, but you know, definitely hard work pays off. It's just for me, it's just... Um, probably where I come from I just want to stay motivated there are a lot of persons in my community who probably see me and want to be like me or better than me so I think that keeps me motivated a lot of youngsters look up to me and for that I'm just grateful Your outstanding contribution to music philanthropy and positive pro-social message to you I decided several years ago to you know spend more time and give more energy and effort to uh, things that are in my view uh, of national importance and um, different uh, things that I'm also passionate about and an award like this is to me just encouragement to continue al along that path. I'm proud of my involvement with the WeTransform program because of you know what it means for uh, those juveniles in the system and what it can mean if they uh, change the direction of their lives. Dr. Amina Isolane Blackwood Meeks, Badge of Honor for Meritorious Service for contribution to the development of the literary arts in the Jamaican culture. It means that we are on purpose and it means that it has been recognized that we are on purpose. It's all about the future. It's all about maintaining what we have. Sometimes we live on the legacy, we live on the name, and we don't build on it. So my dream is that those who have been impacted by my work will build on it. These honorees are on a journey, each with different paths. And as their work continues, so will the stories of their impact. Let's continue to ring in the festivities of national pride and dignity over the next few days as we move towards the future in unity. That's where we leave you today on this edition of Jamaica Magazine, but be sure to join us tomorrow for another lineup of insightful and engaging content. You can also find more content like this on our website at jis.gov.jm. Don't forget to send us your feedback on today's show or any of our programs via email to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Theodore Henry, wishing you a safe and productive week. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.